everybody, it is me. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Brian Clogger. Today we're here for part number two of my interview with Bonnie and Brian Steele, so stay tuned. Well, I hope you enjoyed part number one of my interview with Bonnie and Brian Steele. These two cloggers are phenomenal, um, just great people, and really did a huge, huge service to the art of clogging. And today we're going to talk a little bit about what they felt like their advantages and disadvantages were coming from Utah, where clogging was completely brand new, um, as they uh, exploded onto the competition and uh, clogging scene nationwide back in the mid-80s. And they're also going to talk a little bit about what their favorite uh, routine they did on Hee Haw was and who some of their favorite cloggers that, um, of the 80s were. Um, so stay tuned, you guys, and make sure to check out part number three. Also, don't forget, we're having a contest. I'm giving away $500 to... to uh, don't forget, we're having a contest. I'm giving away $500 of prize money. So uh, see if you've got what it takes to be a crowd pleaser. Check out that information on my YouTube channel, too. We're back, everybody, with part two of my interview with Bonnie Steele and Brian I Steele. I go change my clothes? Yeah, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. Um, yes, it is the same time, same day, but yeah, we're having fun chatting. We've just been talking a little bit about how they started clogging, but I wanted to t talk to Bonnie and Brian a little bit about when you first realized um, what kind of magic was happening with clogging in Utah. Well, the first time when we when we actually did the uh, advertisement and got a hundred kids, we we're like, there's, there's something I to think there's, this. there's probably two elements to it, right? Yeah. There's a financial element to it, yeah. and then there's an artistic element to right. it. The financial element came first, uh, and obviously we're talking about, I mean, nobody made a million dollars, yeah. but, right. but it made it so that we could actually make our living for quite a while because just on clogging. Not very many people make the full-time living clogging. You have to yeah, really be driven, driven to want to do it, just like yeah. I have done it for 30, 40 years now. And you have to get lucky. Timing, timing is a so huge... Well. There's lots of people... I'm not lucky. I'm just that good. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, no, no. Uh, I, I, I give. I think for us, it was luck as much as anything. Yeah, it is. And it was timing. And as we were saying before you did the podcast, is mm -hmm. that we were performing three times a week. That's how. It was so we hot. I, I remember when we, we performed it, it, at the World's Fair oh. in New Orleans, and we were in a center stage, and then they had alleys that came out as spokes on a wheel. And there were, were thousands packed. and thousands. It was the biggest what, crowd what, what we ever came out. What was it? We were at they, the. At, go ahead. Good. No, they were just these big pathways. Oh, okay. Like a spoke. Oh, I see. And like, then, and we were in the center on the stage, and that place was just massively. Thousands. Filled. It just went back further. That it was we just so I could see popular. Just it thousands was, of people wow. that came. It was breathtaking. It was I remember so, the World's Fair in Vancouver. So we did was. A huge crowd. Oh, was that, was, that was a big crowd. Yeah, that but was... I think the biggest crowd we did that wasn't an enormous crowd like it at some halftime or some we, at a big uh, football Stadium. game where there was a reaction. You know, you're not just uh, performing halftime and nobody's really paying attention. Right, but yeah. there was an emotional connection yes. with the yes. audience. It was. Yes. It was so financially. For I, I think for maybe ten years, and we. We started with one studio and then build another studio. And honestly, we put an ad in the paper, 100 people. Put another ad in the paper. I mean, yeah. it, it's hard for people to believe. Yeah. I can't even believe it now. Yeah. And it was ads in a paper. I know, it's not. There was no social media. Yeah. We got the our first computer. There, computer. there was no, no computers. No there were no phones. cell phones. None of this. None. It was just ad in the paper. Mm -hmm. And we just kept building up uh, 13 students. Bonnie's incredible. She's She was a semi-professional dancer. Uh, in uh, an orchestras in, in school. She's an amazing. You know what dancer. I think too. I, I don't think if if you hadn't been together and your brothers and sister or brother-in-law and sisters hadn't been part of it, it, it was all that perfection, that moment that came together mm -hmm. to make it happen, right? Yes, but the artistic, that the financial end was just luck. Honestly, it was just luck, and a lot of hard work, of course. Because yeah. we ended the up with about forty-eight different locations at one time. And we, when we did our franchise with Center Stage. But then artistic, I, mean, I give all the credit. The people that laid the foundation, like Bob, uh, Don Allen, 
uh, you probably don't even know who I it don't is. Know Donnell, yeah. yeah, the folk dance team at BYU really was the foundational yes. beginning with Dennis Cobia. Mm -hmm. Donnell, is that where Dennis used Terry Dennis used Tucker, to teach Terry Tucker, not just Greg's dad, dad. Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. it's just that I was young and yeah. was totally driven. And they were, they loved the so artistic. They started it, but it never quite took off. But when we came in and we right. spread it throughout the and entire then state, we made a decision to go back east. Nice. And we would go, and because it was very, uh, the level of plugging in, in the east was much higher than it was here. And I was just going to ask you about yes. that. What, when you went back east, what was your first thing, what was your first experience competition back east? Fontana, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Fontana, and I think the thing I came away with was realizing that being around good dancers is like osmosis, and you the just, similar. it just absorbs, and you feel the rhythm, and you feel the energy, and it just, it kind of, yeah. it, it, it truly was like Res osmosis. Resistance was futile. Yeah. One other thing that I, I teach in my arts education is thinking about clogging is, it has this driving downbeat rhythm. Most of clogging has a down, an even downbeat rhythm. Yes, da -da, like you said, da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. but it feels good. There's yes. that right. percussion is a way we communicate and it, it, there's an emotional resonance. It's a natural it's, rhythm. And it makes, it does, it gives yes. you an emotional high. And when you're around other cloggers dancing together and jamming, mm -hmm. it's one of the things I love about Powerhouse. So I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, the only, it's the only dance form that I know of, I guess there are some others, but that has a strong sound element to it. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like a drum beat. Yeah. It's quite... More so than tap. It's so engaging. Yeah. Yeah. Well, tight. I would say tap's a little more intricate and light. Maybe has, light. has a little more yeah. variety. A lot more sophisticated rhythm. Yes, but, yes. but clogging is and more so controlled. powerful. More it's controlled. compelling. Like yes. you, you clog in a, in a hall Power. and everybody's going to go like this. Power. Yeah. 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 Yes. I was always excited to go do talent shows as a clogger because I always thought we had a really good chance to win, <laughs> which, you which did. was amazing. We did. Yes. In yeah. the beginning, yeah. and cloggers would win it all because it was Remember all Julie so brand new. Remember Julie and Stacey Slaughter yeah. when they did their little duet? Me and Julie Gottschalk oh won the State Fair oh. talent show. I, oh. I got to find that duet too. Like, there's a lot of good oh, stuff. Oh wow! So, so but then, we, but so I just right. wanted to continue the yeah. uh, finish the thought is that we went back east, uh, began to learn wanted to win, wanted yes. to beat them. Yeah. And so um, we, with our numerous studios, we could, you had, we had a feeder system, which yep. made a gigantic difference, so that we had lots of talented people from which to choose. Yeah. Yeah. And people then would drive for an we, hour we, we got to their level, and then I think when we began competing with them, we were new, and so the, the judges had, hadn't seen us, right? So there was an yeah. element of novelty yeah. to yeah. us yeah. in the beginning. People just Utah loved has, us. Utah and, has a different style too, because, and I don't think it's any worse or any better. Back east is lower, more cool, laid back. Mm -hmm. We are much more up in I your face, you. and you got to watch us yes. right now. You got to see what our. I always tell people, clogging sounds cool because you hit the floor, mm -hmm. but what makes it look cool is your feet coming off the oh. floor. If you want. If you want people to visually notice you, you got you got to get that dynamic change, right? Well, that's that's probably true of anything on stage, right? Yeah, you absolutely. Have to overact. But I feel like that's what visually set us you apart. Could get really. their legs up so yes, high. We, Jen could get her legs oh up my so so. I want to interview Jen too. Yeah. Jenny Powers. Yeah. Jenny. Yes. I'm sure I said, yeah, speg, speg, how do you say it? Spill Spivogel. 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 I yep. could never say it. Yeah. That Jen. And Jen the was the num and... was the in our generation. Yes, was the best clogger of all time um, in, in our generation, Absolutely. and then Jess Jess Jones just before yeah. uh, yes. Jen, uh, she was incredible. Yeah. Uh, but we we always thought we had an edge because we were dancers, and so we did show a lot of showy things. Yeah, and so even when we do precision, whenever there was precision, we thought we had always had a, a distinct advantage because we would take and make a show precision, Correct. precision, which looked so different than what anybody else yeah. had done. Yeah, it wasn't as repetitive, there was, con no. like, I, I, the, my favorite precision yeah. dance we ever did was Fireball with the, the white uh, inlays yes. and the pants. Yeah. That dance is so fast and it's so dynamic in its choreography yeah. and the movement and the dips and the arms and the different things with our hands. It was constantly changing. There was yeah. so much going on and, and, and in a, 
good way. Yeah. It just kept the audience on that journey. I can't believe we danced for three minutes. Oh, fast. my yes. word. Sometimes How did we, we do that? Especially we're when we were went young. from here and we would go back east, our lungs would burn. Yeah, yeah. It would it would burn. Well, it was worse for them because we're in high altitude. So uh, they would come. There were two, true. There were two big events that also made a huge difference in vlog for us, the, the uh, talent, um, the artistic end. And that was Hee Haw. At oh, Opera Land yeah. and the National Cloggers Festival yeah. that what Dennis Cobia started. Sierra Shell kind and of thing. Sierra, yeah. the Sierra oh, Shell. That was a lot of fun. Uh, because it would, we would prepare for those two events and they drove us to excellence. Mm -hmm. And now I think the thing that drives people to excellence is uh, Lagoon. It's the Nationals at Lagoon. Yeah, and they, when they talk, talk about us. it, it sounds the same way we used to talk about it. Yeah. Hmm. Our yeah. kids think of nationals at Lagoon like Christmas. Really? They think it's, they would rather do that than Christmas. Yeah. yeah. I was only there for the first five years of that. And it was, it was exciting back then. Then all Rocky yeah. Mountain team and stuff. But then obviously I moved. So I didn't really get to experience that as it grew into what it is today. It is. I want to, one more thing. I want to talk about Hee Hop for just one more minute. Oklahoma, brand new day, Fireball, uh, Cotton Eye Joe. Cotton Eye Joe. Cotton Eye Joe and the silver dance. I don't even know what that's called. Brand new day number two. Uh, what's your what favorite? The bong. We call yeah. it the bong. It was dance. brand new day in the yeah. last half. But it was like, nah. <laughs> and you and you have to start bong. with Star Spangled Banner. Right. See, that was yeah. before me. Yeah. I was just first, starting. Clogging. First one was Star Spangled yeah. Banner, and that's where everybody got to got know to us. Know who we and were. we had sat and out And we won at uh, Silver Dollar City. City. Right. That was that your was first our national first title. Big win. Yeah. yeah. And that's on YouTube, yeah. by the way, on my YouTube channel. Yeah. yeah so if you want to check out Still Family Cloggers, look up Silver Dollar City 1984. It's on there. Oh, um, don't tell me here. <laughs> some, of the right? some of the Lagoon stuff's on there, too. I, every Can year I, I'm trying to get a few more things. I, I want to say one more thing about the artistic end, if it's okay. Yeah, please. Yes, one of the great things about clogging it was a, is it was a totally undeveloped art form. Yes. Right? Every year, we would introduce new elements into clogging. Yeah. And so it was almost, it was an evolving art form. Yeah. And that made it so exciting. So much freedom. Yes. yes. And we were always, every year we Thinking looked different the than the year before and more difficult. It just got more and more difficult. Yeah. Tandy Barrett was saying when she started clogging in the, in 76, there were only four steps that they taught at workshops. Really? There were four steps and they just rearranged them. And then she made up the fancy double because she didn't like the double, right? It, it, like, I just can't believe there were only yes. four steps that they were all doing and just yeah. recombining and sharing, right? Kind of, it's crazy. But you're right. It, it was very raw, it was undeveloped. Because it was a folk dance. Again, mm -hmm. a dance of the people. Most cloggers were self-taught. Like, you go to a community center sure and dance know. with your friends. Yeah. It wasn't like you went to training, yeah. camp, you know, until later. Now there's more training. Um, so, Silver Dollar City... You tell me, what was, what do you think was your most important win of those six? Silver Dollar City or the five he -haws? What one made the most difference to you? There's no wrong answer. I, I don't know. He was it's, it's so hard to, exciting when we won. It's hard to Silver Dollar was amazing. tell you, it's hard to express what it felt like to win the first national title. Yeah. And that was at Silver Dollar City. Yeah. But it wasn't the prestige was not the same as it was at Hee Haw. Yeah. So we would, I, don't, I know you remember this, is that Hee Haw would make us wait, yes. and so we'd Ugh. compete, and then we'd have to walk oh, around the, the park, park, and it was an amusement park, yeah. and we would walk around the park, and then we'd sit and wait, and oh, all we were listening for was the letter S, because they'd go third place, and if they'd say S, S you'd know, we'd go, oh, yes. and then I, oh. it was the most exciting thing, and then when they'd go second place and it wouldn't be an S, we would go then crazy. We'd go, oh, yeah, we'd go oh my crazy. gosh, leave me. There was nothing like that. I have a like, photo of you. Nothing like the that. photo of you at that specific moment, one of the years, uh, where you're in the chair and we just found in. out we went and you could just see you ready to spring out of your seat. It's a yeah. great picture. I'll see if I can find it, put it in the video. Yeah. It's really, really a beautiful thing. That's hard to express because there was nothing, nothing like, like that anxiety as they Going began counting it down, too, and then when it happened, oh, it's, I, it's hard. Being backstage ready to go on, and being, it was electric. There it was, it so really fun. was electric. I, I mean, you guys changed my life. 
I, you know, when you met me, I was so insecure. My little Brian. I cried when Tammy and Bruce <laughs> saw my private lesson and ran out to the car. But you guys, <laughs> and, and do you remember when I? Didn't I know that. No, you didn't. Tammy, <laughs> Brian was working with me in the in Gerald's garage, that oh, studio you had. Yeah. And Tammy and Bruce walked in, and I'm 14 years old. I ran out bawling and hid in the back of mom's van. I mean, that's the difference between oh the, who gosh. I was then and who I was a year and a half later. I mean, well, let me, I have to tell a story about you. Okay. okay because this is your YouTube channel. <laughs> I don't know if you remember this, but we, we had uh, in studios competitions called Steel Family Invitation. Yes, I do remember this. And you. I don't know what year it was. Was it my purple ribbon win? Yes. This is a and one of the most knew, emotional moments of my life. Yes. For us two, we said, there's another steel family yeah. clogger. And we didn't know until then. It's incredible. You, yeah, it was an extraordinary yeah, was. moment. I remember that. I, I worked so hard. Um, <laughs> but I got... Gosh, hang on. I'll catch your brother. Probably had that out. Anyway, I went and bought new jeans for the first time, like cool jeans and big boy shirt, yeah. right? And I practiced my butt off. And when I got on stage, and I knew I wanted it so bad, and I jumped, you jumped in my arms, and I was bawling. It was great. Uh, <laughs>